All right, here we are. Happy Wednesday. How's it going? What do we got? 29th of July. How are we doing out there? Another night? Project Healing Waters. Happy Hump Day. Thanks for tuning in. Glad you could join me. Uh, if you're tuning in live, um, if you're watching this after the fact, again, you know, hey, thanks for tuning in uh, after the fact. Uh, we should have a lot of fun here today, tonight, today, tonight, to do. Uh, let's get this uh, live stream pulled up on my channel. There we are. That way I can monitor the chat. Bench side. And that's why I call these kind of a, a bench side pop up. You know, I want you guys are, are out there, guys and gals who are out there. I want you to find and help me out. Send me a link. Shoot me an email. Uh, whatever it is. Uh, anybody else who live streams like this, tying flies on such a regular basis. Um, I, I don't know of any big name people out there doing that. Uh, since the Corona uh, virus hit, a whole bunch popped up. Uh, they're doing them on Facebook and other things like that for uh, Project Heal Healing Waters like this. Um, but I don't know. You know, it's maybe I'm missing them. But it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, and, you know, when the coronavirus kicked in, um, you know, it was kind of a... a an inspiration or a beginning for, or re-beginning a re restart whatever you want to call it uh with the live streaming because i i had a uh, saturday night i believe it was or i don't know what it was i think it was a friday night or sat so, i don't know it was a very inconvenient time for me and it was kind of tough to do but here we are today um boy are we gonna have fun so we're going to uh, we're going to try something similar. I I don't know. We're, we'll call it the uh, Master Splinter uh, variation. I I have the originally labeled as a mouse. Um, so I understand there is some time delay uh, between uh, the audio and the video. Uh, so, apologize for that, but here we are. All right, what do we got? Good evening, Josh Anderson, Andreas. Good evening, or uh, good morning. All the way from Germany, I believe. Um, and Sean Brooks. Good evening, everyone. That's right, folks. As we're tuning in, feel free to slide on over to the chat. That's what the chat's for. Um, who remembers actual like chat rooms, um, like on Prodigy and early AOL? Uh, you sit there and beep, beep, bop, 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 and you get these really long threads going back and forth. But anyways, say hi in the chat. Um, end of July. I don't know. Let's go ahead and just, I don't know, not waste any more time. We'll uh, slide over to the bench. Nope. Actually, hold on one second. I'll be right back. Hold on. All right, we're back. I gotta get my camera flipped back over. There we go. All right. Chat rooms, we're dating ourselves. Yeah, you bet. You betcha, chat rooms. You know, some of the coolest, some of the weirdest times, some of the, probably the craziest things came out of chat rooms. Um, 
I think I'm going to have to upgrade. I, I think it's definitely going to have to upgrade my headphone slash uh, microphone setup. Because I just went to plug in my uh, iPod and I heard a little feedback. So anyways, so th I, I haven't tied too many of these in the past. Um, but here we are tonight. We're going to get her done. All right, so get things started. Um, I know Frank might tune in later or he might um, catch us. Might be in now, but I got my coffee mug. I'm back from the VFW. That way I don't have to use my travel mug all the time. All right, so we're getting a little mousy here. We can do a whole little inception thing. That way I can see the chat. All right, here's our hooks. We got these Daiichis. I like these. Um, I like these wide gap stinger hooks. Just like it says, catch more fish. That's what we're here to do. Good evening from Iowa. Hiya, hello. Here we go. I'm going to get this out of the way. No convenient place for this. What a shame. All right, so we got our size two. This is that Daiichi 2720. Look at it. it. Even says it's right here, right there. Look at that mice, and that's what we're gonna be going for. A little mighty mouse. Well, actually, this I won't call this a mighty mouse because I'm sure there's a pattern called the mighty mouse or something like that. And Denier. And we'll just start this off up front and lay a little thread base down. Work our way front to rear. do de do What's up? Papa Bear. All right, we're going to start all the way to the back. And the first thing we're going to tie in is our tail and we didn't prepare any of this beyond some slicing and dicing and uh, etc etc we got some strips this is a rabbit and I'm gonna go for a tan mouse um, and this is more or less based off of uh, what do you want to call it the master splinter Oh bother, how do I turn that off? Okay, that shouldn't happen again. One of the settings I have on my phone, I suppose, is to turn that off. All right, anyways, before we go on and mess around with our uh, our uh, rabbit hair here, our rabbit, our hair here now. So this is just a regular cut, all right? And it kind of, it more or less goes with the grain. Um, maybe that's, a, I don't know, there might be a better terminology than with the grain, um, but it, it falls the natural lie of that, uh, that hair wants to lay down here towards the left and that's the way it's trimmed and this is what we're going to use for our tail we're going to trim this up and work around with this here in a little bit but before we get there we're going to talk about the uh, cross cut a cross cut it's essentially the same hair because it comes from the same critter but instead of cutting it um, either, I don't know how do you explain that 
it's cross yeah it's cross cut I'm trying to use the same word to define itself but you can see this is kind of the center of the hide and these are the flanks around it but anyways so anyways we're going to use just a regular zonker uh, for our tail we're going to get that prepared and trimmed we're going to add some foam and then we're going to tie in our cross cut zonker so as you guys know me and i don't like to waste so we'll get things started right here at the end We're going to give that a little diagonal cut. And this is our regular zonker strip. Now when you're looking for zonker strips and such, you'll see something that says like a magnum. Well, just like every other magnum in the world, that means it's just a wee little bigger. And usually that just means it's a little bit wider of a strip. So let's look at our overall length. Boy, we know mice have those long little tails. Let's go about there, and then just a little bit to tie on. This looks like a very decent spot to trim that off. And you notice we cut the hide, not the hair. I'm going to trendle off the majority of this. And I'm just going to leave a little puff, a little lion's tail. On the end. You know what? I'm gonna switch my scissors. In fact, here we go. So just make sure we got something else holding it. That's nice. Just like that. I suppose you could use that for a project later on. But there we go. This will be our little tail. So I'll just trim that off out of the way. You know what? You can give it a little, uh, a little baboon butt, a little red, a little, a little red hanging out. It's great for night fishing. One of those little, I don't know, Easter eggs that you know it's there, but nobody else does, kind of thing. All right, let's see here. Let's grab. I don't have any brown. Can't find that. But I have a little, uh,. Let's see, a warm gray. See how that's nice and bright and light and white? I just want to darken that. Ooh, that darkened it way up. Almost black. That's all right. See how that gets when it just gets a little bit of moisture on it? Yeah, buddy. All right. All right, onward 
and onward. There's our tail. Next, we're going to tie in our piece of foam. So, we're going to measure our hook scap. We're going to go about that. Where are we at? We'll just round that to 10. And here's my foam. What do you think I used this for before? one didn't quite get punched out so anyways we're gonna measure out uh, some foam give it a quick trim and we're gonna cut ourselves kind of like our gurgler kind of like the old gurgler but this is mousy and I'm cutting this on the fly, made to order. Who wants to guess how many of these I tied today? Because the correct answer would be zero. Paul in the house, Paul Bridgers. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, I didn't even notice I forgot the little bit of a sticker over on that end. All right. So as you know, from our tying with foam experience, let's go ahead and get our thread moved forward. Okay, I want maximum floatability in this, so we'll start this up front. This is number one. Number one today. All right, here we go. I like to take my foam and make a little crayon. Crayon tip, Crayola tip. You know how you get a grand, brand new crayon? And that's what it looks like at the tip. I don't know, that's what I see. All right, so we're gonna start it off here on the near side of the hook, and we're just gonna grab it with a couple of wraps. And we're going to let it roll and find center. And we're going to space out our wraps as we work towards the rear, towards that tail. All right, we're going to wrap back and forth a couple of times, adding tension. But we're not reefing down super duper hard on this. Boom, bada bing. All right, so now here we go. Now we're gonna add our cross cut. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hop this off. So one of the things we want to uh, be mindful about is when we tie this on, how do we want our uh, fibers to fall. If we tie it on backwards and upside down, we end up with something like that. That's not what we want. We want it to lay down just like so. So, let's go ahead and prepare this. I like to trim off just a little bit of the hair, nice and close. A little close to the hide. That way when we add tension, we're adding tension to the hide. All right, so as this is sitting, we got our little mohawk and our uh, hair is on the far side. All right, we're gonna tie this in just like so. And a wrap or two to just capture it. And then we can just start adding tension. All right, and before we fully commit, we'll just give it a test wrap or two, just to make sure we're satisfied with our, our directional of travel. All right, we're gonna set that off to the back. 
All right, as you know, where's a good distance? Give you guys a quick second. What's a good distance to keep your thread back from the eye of a hook? A sailor would know this. That's right, you keep it an eye's length behind the eye. Eye, eye. Oh, what a day. All right, a little dab of glue you. A little bit of insurance policy in this one word. Um, we're, we're just going to add a little bit in here. And again, I like to use uh, the gel control glue for something like this because I can just add a real nice light coat. Just like that. All right, we're going to take, I don't know, not quite, just slightly, ever so slightly, not quite overlapping, but touching wraps. We're not going for massive amounts of bulk here. And be mindful of your glue. And what's really nice about uh, palmering and wrapping um, crosscut is all the hair is automatically pointed in a safe direction. How do you feel about that? Well, sir, I liked it. All right, we're at our thread. Let's go ahead and just fold the hair back. Because again, the closer to the hide you can get your thread, the better. Close trim. There we go. Give that a nice tight pinch here and there. You can kind of feel that glue squish around and then it doesn't squish. It's it locking in. Look at that. Grab our brush. We're just gonna brush that up and out. Just make sure everything's kinda nice and clean. And then we're gonna give it a nice part right down the middle. with foam we don't want to reef down on it too hard too much too fast I'm gonna do a couple wraps over the foam and then a couple of wraps directly in front and then we'll go back on top of the foam because the uh, wraps in front coming back Give that a nice pinch. That's going to be our head up front. I think that'll work. Maybe go just a little bit bigger. If you got a decent size head up front, just like the gurgler, you're going to get some action off that. Oops, squeak, squeak. Let's go ahead and finish this off with a whip finish. I'm going to do this right behind the eye, the hook and under the head. Put a boom, bada bing. Alright. 
suppose we could have got creative there as far as something to do. But that's it. More or less. Give that a couple flops on the water. A couple of quick strips. And boom. It's going to be fish on. Tug. Oh. War. Let's add a little dab of glue. Yeah. Right underneath. Get in there with a little bit of head cement. Where is it? We're looking for the secret sauce. Ah, uh, yes. There it is. And you guys guessed it when I say secret sauce. I mean Sally Hansen's. There, don't you know? Alright, so what do you think there, folks? That's a mouse if I've ever seen one. You know what we could do on our next one? And I've done this before is sometimes add a little wire to run in the middle. I don't know if that's worth it or not, but what do you think? Yay or nay? What do you think? Questions, comments, concerns, how ya, how ya doing? Switch my camera back over. Hold on one second. All right. There we go. So that was our, uh, our first little mouse of the night. You know, I think adding that little little bit of a uh, little, little 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 brown or that gray to that tail um, definitely added a little bit of a uh, little bit of color. So there's my mug. It's got all my all my armor ribbons and such. Good times. Hook size for this, question is what size hooks? Uh, for this one I did a size two. All right, bonus point for Sean. For the eyes of paying attention. Awesome. So, what do we think? How are we doing tonight? Now we got a few more people checked in. Let me get my pen. I think I lost my pen. I do have a little pencil. Elks, say no to drugs. That's right. So, um, let's see here. This is, I think this is a master splinter mouse pattern, right? So this is not a spun deer hair mouse. This is our master splinter mouse I'm gonna cross that off the list. We did our muddler. Um, Dahlberg diver. We we're thinking about doing the Dahlberg diver. Um, but again, uh, you know, time and everything, and I always love making up excuses, but you know, it's like you think you have all week to prepare for something, um, but I, I don't know. We ran, we run out of time on, on Wednesdays. Uh, so 
we got up and took care of our buddy across the street and then we went for a walk and ran some errands what did we we didn't go we just did some chores around the house but i don't know how is everybody doing tonight i want everybody to give me a scale from one to ten one to ten and smiley faces or emojis 10 being the most awesome uh, one is just kind of whatever but from zero to awesome how are we doing tonight leave a comment leave a chat cuz I'm two thumbs up today um, but anyways, let's go ahead and uh, slide over to that side and tie another fly while you guys let me know how you're doing. Alon, good evening. Thanks for tuning in. One of the things I found, and he's going to be hanging out with me on my bench for a while. He's called my bench monkey. And he can say, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is called the mouse. And thank you for tuning in. I don't know. I picked this little guy up at an art fair. 30 years ago, maybe at the Ann Arbor Art Fair or someplace. I really don't remember. Um, but I picked him up. I got that. I got a, uh, a little bumblebee mouse thing or something. I don't know. But anyways, he's, he's going to be hanging out with us for a little while on the bench. So let's go ahead and do this again. This mouse turned out pretty slick. So, um, I wouldn't go much, much lighter. I wouldn't go with a white mouse. I would definitely want to keep it with a uh, dark brown, dark tan, or perhaps black. Because your most effective time to be fishing this is going to be in the evenings. Um, as, the, as the sun is setting in, into the dark. And believe it or not, I believe the terminology is called mousing. So, let's go ahead and get this started. Nice little thread base, front to rear. It's a nice beautiful day today. We did pork chops on the grill for lunch. I guess we still haven't decided yet what we're going to do for dinner, but we'll get there when we get there. Alright, I'm going to actually go ahead, and last time we went down into the bend a little bit. So we're going to do that again. And I suppose if you really wanted, if you're into that type of thing, um, you could also add a weed guard. And, I don't know, that's not really my thing. I'm not really in positions where I'm fishing for much uh, on the weeds and stuff like that. Alright, let's grab our tail. And this is, I think this is a... Uh, I don't know if it's dyed or if it's natural, but it was definitely cleaned. I'll tell you that for free. Maybe my chat's broken. Okay, Paul asked two millimeter foam. I believe so. Let me finish this step, and then when we get the foam, I'll uh, I'll give you a bona fide measurement. Alright, why 
wise man once said, always cut those at a little 45, taper that. Right, let's go ahead and measure out a hook's length. And give ourselves a little bit to tie on with. And like before, we're going to cut the hide, not the hair. Leave herself a little tough. Right there at the very end. That's going to be fantastic. Let's see how sharp these scissors are. Just like that. It's gone. Nice close trim there. Let's go ahead and make sure. Because, you know, the beautiful thing is, is we have one that we just tied right in front of us. I just want to make sure I get my length of on this. up. am 100% satisfied. I like that. Seems fair right about there. Just like that. All right, let's grab our marker. We're going to dirty up our tail a little bit. And what I have on my bench, what I keep, are these uh, Pro Markers. Windsor, Windsor and Newton Pro Marker. Where we can get away with charging way too much for a marker. Seriously though, you go broke buying these. So keep your caps on them and take good care of them. And they'll take good care of you. Just like everything else on your bench. I like that. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Definitely mousy. All right. Here we go. We are on to our foam. And the question was two millimeter, as I believe so. Can confirm. There at that two millimeter line. Yep, two millimeter craft foam. Um, this is not the same as the River Road creation foam. This is just slightly different. This is from the craft store. Let's get this ready. A little taper and same. A little taper. So you can start with this on the near side of the hook, right? And as you capture it and work your way towards the bend. You let it naturally roll to where its new home wants to be. Go to your home. All right, we'll work our thread back and forth once or twice. And we're not reefing down on this too, too tight, too, too hard. But you still want to be nice and nice and firm with it. Just a lick of that. Now 
So I've been trying to think about how to do some sort of online contest or giveaway or something. And I haven't quite figured out how I want to pull that off. I think this is going to be enough because this is going to be our cross cut. And I think heck or high water, I'll make this sucker work. Trim off just a little tough, a little cross cut, a little tie down point just to keep the hair a hair away. So, kind of a rule of thumb is if you're going to be wrapping stuff forward and you care about what direction it is. You have to tie it on opposite of what you want. Alright, so this is the bottom side out. Because when I go to rotate this, it's going to turn on to the inside. And that's how we want it. Alright, little dab of glue. Yeah, a little bit of insurance policy in there to help hold this all together. And I like to use the gel control so it doesn't run all over the place. Nice little thin bead. Don't have to go bananas. Alright, we'll carefully polymer this forward. I'll just take touching wraps. I'm going to space this out just a little bit because we're going to use this whole cotton picking little guy. Yeah, buddy. It's called using all that material. Oh, we don't have to. We'll just give it a couple more wraps. And just like that. Right there at the end. Don't crowd the eye, AA Ron. So I'll pull that hair back. Get us a little tighter onto the hide. That's what we want. Bada boom. Bada bing. Get rid of that little bit. These tight pinches, just make sure it seats into that glue. So Minnesota has kicked in mandatory mask wearing for all your indoor to-dos and to-dos. So everybody needs to mask up. And you know what I was thinking? With all these mask um, orders in place, what better time to become a ventriloquist? Because like I said, you know, I've got, I've got this guy here and he says, you know, you do a really good job tying these flies and, you know, hey, forget about it. Ooh, ah, ah, Mr. Monkey. All right, I'll check you later. See? I did that all with my mouth closed. Yeah, it's been a long summer. Make sure we get a nice part. I really don't want to trap too much hair. suppose if you wanted you could add a little dab of glue there. I don't think it's necessary though. A couple of wraps just to grab it. And we'll do a turn or two in front. And we'll get back here and add a little bit more tension. Ooh la la. 
Alright, let's get our fold back. Oh, you know what I'm tempted to do? We're going to dig into our scraps. Because I think this will look pretty cool. trim this up in a minute but I got some more uh, what is this it's more two millimeter yeah yeah what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little two millimeter foam in here we're gonna fold that back in there nice and tight there like that right and we're gonna trim off that eye but we're gonna add just a little dab of glue right We'll trim that back here in just a minute. We want to get our thread behind it. And it's almost like a hammerhead kind of deal. Right. Like that. Trim this nice and flush. close to it and we'll bring our thread up front lean on to a little whip finish we like eyes on our flies at least I do all right so we're gonna try something that let's go ahead and go right down the middle and I want to round that off what do I got to do that Just gonna round the corners off because why not? I don't know. The old green eyes got it. So here we uh, got to add in, you know, just a little bit of some magic, right? Because we know fish like red, and we got red. We know fish like chartreuse, so we had a little chartreuse. Now we're going to add a little dab of insurance policy. Some Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Oh boy. that soak in there and it'll be all right all right all right no laughs all 
All right. What do we think? Do we like the ears or not? Does it do anything? I don't know, you tell me. What do you guys think? With or without the ears? With or without the little foam green eyes? Got a little heavy on the thread wraps up front, but that'll be all right. Just add water and it'll be swimming. I know we got a little bit of a delay between what I say. Add some legs. If you added some legs, would it be a different pattern? Mm. I don't know. Let's add some legs. You know what we could do? Let me pull out my hopper legs, my hopper cutters, and we'll add hopper luggers. Maybe a different color for an indicator. You don't need an indicator for this. <laughs> if you don't know where this is, or if a fish is hitting something like this. Mm. But I like where you're going with that, Josh. That's good thinking. Some different colored. All right, let's get, um, we're gonna hybrid. We're gonna make, We're going to use some of the grasshopper from the Tom Sue Hoppers uh, kit. Let's grab our foam. That's going to be enough for that. And I'm just going to punch these out here real quick. Let's do one, two. Three and four. I hope that didn't look too bad <laughs> on camera. So now we're just kind of um, moving on and experimenting. And this is what I really like doing. I like making things look like pictures in books. But even more so, I like just creating things. So we're going to get our, what we're going to use for feet. that off to the side and we got to trim out because I didn't get the cleanest cuts on these with these foam punches you really need to uh, have a nice solid cutting surface is ideal otherwise it's stuck So yes, we are about to try to use some grasshopper legs on our mouse. I dropped it. There it is. Oh, uh, we got Steve Trybowski in the house. Good evening, Steve. Thanks for tuning in, man. Oz, appreciate it. Four little legs. And we'll figure out exactly how those are going to go on when we get to that. So, 
So the thing is, I guess, when we tune in to one of my live streams, no matter whether it's this one or the Monday mornings, you never know what we're gonna actually gonna do. We might start off with something and then where we venture off to. The final destination is never, never known. We might know a little bit of how we're gonna get somewhere on the journey, but that's not gonna be it. All right. Let's do this once more. I know how I feel about the ears. But we are gonna do our legs. Maybe something. Because I mean, re reality is, is mice have really small legs. So. Let's get this guy off to the side. He can hang out with his other friend. Where'd he go? Have to bounce. Everybody have a great night. Hey, Steve, thanks for tuning in. Oz appreciates it. Here we go. We're gonna keep these uh, consistent with our size twos. I really like these wide gap hooks. Twenty-seven twenties. Fifteen. So what's interesting? What you guys don't get to see is on my phone, and somehow, some way, some point, um, I got it connected to uh, the Chicago Cubs. And as soon as they started playing ball earlier, I got a little thing that popped up, and I know what the score is. Bottom of the fifth, Cubs are down by two. Playing the Reds. Baseball is interesting this year. Um, you know, I'm a. I grew up as a pretty good side, pretty good fan. 89, 90s, 91, and the, you know, the Cubs. You know, my boyhood years. It was epic. It was awesome. Couldn't get much better than baseball. But now I really couldn't name more than a dozen players that are still active but does not mean I don't enjoy the game I waited my whole life for the Chicago Cubs World Series and I said to myself self if the Cubs ever make it to the World Series I don't care how much it costs I'm gonna go oh they made it to the World Series I saw how much a standing room only ticket was and I watched uh, from the VFW because uh, I could not afford those tickets. But I don't know. Let's go ahead. We got our, th our thread wrapped around that back end. You know, something I didn't do before that I am going to do this time is I'm just going to add a little bit of head cement on top of that. Doesn't take much. Now we'll have to go back and just add a little dab. There we go. All right, we need our tail, which is our regular cut zonker strip, rabbit. I 
diagonal cut at the very end. And we'll measure this out. Nice close cut. Cut the hair or the hide, not the hair. That way we uh, have a nice, nice remainder. It's kind of like one of those oddly satisfying videos. Get that nice clean cut just the first time. Those are the Dr. Slick razors. Long edition. Or extra long or XO, whatever you want to call it. All right, I'll tie this tail in. If I didn't mention yet, or I haven't mentioned recently, I'm using a red 210 denier flat wax thread. Ow, that's my elbow. All right, we'll dull this down with our marker. I'm not going into the hair. I'm just hitting both sides of the hide and I happen to just drag some of it into the hair. But that's it. Because one of the things we know is when we're fishing in the evenings, we want to go dark, almost black. But in preparation for our video here tonight, we have this nice little tan hair. So, you know, it's up to you guys. Pick your color, any color. Go, go bananas. All right. Just want to make sure I have enough. Put it in them, and that's going to fold over, and that's going to fold back. We could try this here. Not the cleanest of cuts, but it'll work. roll right up to the top. All right. We'll work our way back and forth a little bit. That's nice. So if y'all can do me a solid while we're sitting here, hit that thumbs up button. I will appreciate that. Because the more thumbs up we get, the more likes we get, the more the algorithms pick everything up. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna get the uh, Crosscut zonker strip tied on, and then we're going to tie in our legs. Let's 
see, this is going to go like this, and that's going to wrap like that. Cut a little bit of that extra hair away. Alright, so now we get to think about where we want to put our legs and how we want to tie in our legs. So where'd they go? We got one, two, three, four of these bits and pieces. They're all identical, but we can use them in different ways. So I think kind of with our back legs, I just might want to kind of go like our hopper. All right, so we're going to give this a second. All right, uh, we're going to call this option A, because as we see it, this is the top of the hook. We're going to call this option A, tie it in like this, or option B. Push the leg out. I want to do something like that in the front. I think we're going to go with option A. You know what we can do? So we can just tie one on. I think that's going to be it. Let's get the other one tied in. Now we got some legs in there. Boy, oh boy. All right, we'll advance our thread forward. And you know what? I think I'm just going to do the same thing, but tie it in just a little bit shorter. So instead of giving myself that much, I'm actually going to do this forward. Yeah. We're having fun tonight, right folks? Give me a thumbs up if you're having fun. Kind of starting to look like a little piece of roadkill. I kid you not, this looks, <laughs> this looks like a little piece of rug hill. What can I say? Alright. We're getting there. We'll see how this works out. I'm trying to bring... A All right, well, 
Wish me luck. Ground control to the major time. They have a glue right up top. So we'll take one wrap back there, we'll get in front of the other back legs. Let's work our way forward with touching wraps. And this is a cross cut, zonker strip. Which means the hair was cut parallel, not parallel, but perpendicular. To the natural lie. Alright, let's do. We'll come up and under, and that's going to be it. Because if I take a full wrap up front, we'll be crowding it, and that's not what we're standing up for. Left of center fly. Yeah, no kidding. That's the story of my life. All right. Get our brush and bodkin, pick that out. A little bit too much. Give yeah, this one just a little bit of red eye. A little dab of glue.
Boy, I don't know. Keep sticking myself. I mean, who knows how that'll hold once it, that all gets wet and you're casting and flapping that around. Looks like it's got some marks on it. Might as well just mark it a little bit up. Why not? Because we know we like dark. You know what? We'll see how this looks. Actually, it's not that bad. I like the little front arms I'm crawling for help. Oh man, the poor cubs, man. Ate nothing. Yeah, who knows about the legs. They're definitely fun though. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> yes, I did get your email. However, um, I did not respond. Um, that is um, my fault. So apologize. I'll have to revisit that tomorrow afternoon. There's another little mouse. I don't know. What do we think about the legs? Yay or nay? So what do we think? Legs, yes or no? I think they add a little bit to it, but I don't know how well it will hold in the water. Um, I think going with the legs would add a little bit more wind resistance, um, and it might complicate the cast. Uh, I don't know. I, I like the keep it simple of this pattern. Just you just need rabbit hair cut two different ways and foam. That's that's it. And one of the things that I've learned um, over the years of tying a butt ton of flies is. I, honestly, I get a lot of satisfaction out of the easier they are to tie, as the more simpler. And simple is pretty good effective. So, 
So Sean says, sounded good at first, but I think it's a no. Yeah. That's how I feel. I, I agree. I, I think it might look to our eyes. May or may not be a little bit better, but I think in practice, um, the uh, legless might be it. Because in reality, how small, I mean, you put a mouse in your hand. You don't see its big old legs flopping out. But we gave it a try, and we're going to give it a, a test in the bath. Not in the bath, but um, in the water. So maybe next week we'll tie some deer hair mouse. We'll do some spinning. Let's do that. Let's plan on that. Next week we're going to do more mice. But it's going to be deer hair. Hi, that's a lot of work. But it's all right. We're doing it for you guys. Um, I, so far, I guess the plan is at least through the end of August. Um, honestly, you know, it's like end of August. That's when we're going to start getting back into school mode. Everybody and their mom and their uncle has an opinion about how to reopen schools and all that. Um, but all tied up fly tying school. We're staying, uh, we're staying online and free. Um, you know, there's no cost to watching my YouTube videos. There's no cost to asking questions. There's no cost for help. Um, yeah, that's what we do here for you guys. Um, these Wednesday nights, uh, believe it or not, like 20, 30 weeks ago, how, how, how many weeks... Have we been um, staying home since March? March, April, May, June, July, four months. So however many weeks that is. We've been this many months worth of weeks um, away from Project Healing Waters face to face. Uh, but there's other uh, outfits out there doing live streams. Um, what live streams would you recommend? We got 11 others watching, 10, 10, 11 other people. Who other, who else is doing um, live streams that you would recommend to your fellow fly tires, to your fellow anglers? Um, you know, videos are great, but I think live streams are fun. Uh, so we're going to take a couple more ships here to share coffee, and then we're going to do one more. These kind of are coming out at, if I jibber jabber long enough, we could stretch these out to uh, a 30 minute tie. <laughs> I don't know. We didn't take a, we didn't take a big break. Actually, I don't think I took a break at all. I dipped out at the mini beginning because uh, Jess has a, uh, she had a, uh, what do you call them, a Zoom. Anyways, yeah. So next week we'll plan on possibly we'll play we'll do the spun deer hair mouse. Let's go ahead and slide over and do one more of these tonight. Unless there's any suggestions, this is kind of like last call for suggestions as far as to. Oh, it's a fun little box. I need to use these flies. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and do this. Switch the camera back over to yonder. And we'll scooch your chair over. Oh, man. 
Not a good day to be a cub. Not a Chicago cub. Kind of getting their butts handed to them. First things first, we'll start our thread. Uh, again, um, for those of you who are just joining us, 2720, size twos, Daiichi's. These are a nice light wire, straight eye hook, bronze. Uses, deer hair, bass, bugs, divers, frogs, mice and they ain't kidding that's what these are good for two ten denier flat wax red fred I feel like my fingers just dirty but that's from uh, the marker. Hockey is back, so I'm excited. Sean says, I watch a couple of others, but yours is the only one I've seen that shows from the tire's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler's. I get it. Autocorrect. It is my worst enema. I mean, enemy. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's lay our little thread base, and we're going to go down into the bend and just hide a little bit of red down here. You know what we could do? We're going to back this train up. This is going to be bonus footage. Bu 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 bonus. Because what we're going to do is we're going to tie in a little weed, weed guard. Let's go to where I want to use for that. How does this feel? That's 15. So this is, appears to be 15 yards, looks like 25 pound. What was this other one? Was it 18 pound? I think that'll work. So obviously this has its natural curve natural curvature to that and we're going to want to match that and we're going to do our best to lay this right on top I'm going to go forward with that just a little bit all right prepare to dive 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 oh we want to flatten our thread out Spin our bobbin counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on the side of the world you're from. See that is going to just go in there nice and comfortably. Does that? and tight. Alright, before I work my thread back up, I'm going to add a little dab of glue. Where'd we go with that? Boom 
bada bing. Alright, we'll work our thread in that glue. Up the bend. Really working that in there. Sometimes you just can't be afraid to get a little glue on your fingers. Alright. We are to our tail. And we'll loop this around and address that when we get, get up front. But for now, we'll keep it hanging out the back and out of the way. All right, we need to get our tail. Actual tail. All right, just like before, we'll just give that a quick trim. Get that little diagonal cut. It's our hook scab or hook's length. And we'll give it just a little bit more. Hook's length and a little bit more. A little bit of change in there. So far, so good. And this is just a regular zonker. Uh, for the body, we use a cross cut. Just lead our little, little lion's tail on the back. I'm trying to just get this in one big swoop. There we go. Sounds good. Right about there. Tie our tail in on top. We'll just run that all the way forward. And you know where that's going? I know where that's where. All right, we need our foam. Cut this at about a hook scap for width. Thereabouts. Or for our friends in Canada, they're a boots. myself enough there so if that goes all the way there and that goes all the way there it'll be pretty close so we'll sneak that back just touch that back there just a little bit this piece is actually coming out just a little bit wider 
the first couple. So we'll just see how it wraps up here at the end. Let's go back just a little bit more. Oh, you know what we didn't do is we didn't dye her tail at all. Still. Just gonna send it. We need our uh, zonker, our, our cross cut. This guy's looking a little, a little beat up here at the end. Let's get a fresh piece. Save that for something else. A different project for a different day. Oh yeah. That's going to be nice. So we've established next week we're going to try our our, uh, our hand at a uh, spun deer hair. A rabbit. Let's go ahead. Dabaglutium. Little insurance policy. Not too much. There we go. Definitely got a lot less to avoid when you don't have those foam legs in the mix. I like this one straight up. You can see the hair is actually getting shorter as we get to this point in our cross cuts. Which I suppose is all right as we move forward up towards the eye of the hook. In fact, let's just park that right there. A few wraps behind. And that'll keep it from spinning out of control. to run my uh, doohickey my weed guard maybe not so much a weed guard at this point as it is a uh, let me just throw a quick whip finish in here or 
half hitch, apparently. So here we get to just kind of play with the flex. Sometimes you see some, they go through the eye, but this is such a heavy gauge. I wouldn't be able to get a, an actual thread in there. So I'm gonna tie this in behind the eye of the hook. I just realized is I can just lay this guy flat and back. Alright, so theoretically that's going to keep it from, you know, we're going to be chucking this off towards the bank. And hopefully this will keep it from hooking up on a tree or something. Not so much a weed guard, maybe like a brush, brush guard. Keep a simple stupid. I like that. Your strip do you cut the rabbit strip down the middle lengthwise to get that size of two but they're a half inch wide. Are you talking about the the width of the strip? Because I actually have a cutter. It's the Tandy leather strip cutter. But they come in different widths. I'm not sure if I... Yeah, I don't think I cut this one. Insurance policy under this. Now, trying to cut a rabbit strip after it's already been cut, you know, making a, a wide, going from a magnum to to something, you know, like regular, it's going to be kind of hard to do.
So there you have it. That's our little mouse with our little extra piece of mono in there. And there's so many different ways you'll see to do the uh, this weed guard thing. That's how I did it today, tonight. Um, you know, I might do it slightly different next time. I'm not 100% certain on this. I, I really don't do too much with weed guards. Quote unquote weed guards. But what do you do? Anything with the darkening of anything. So yeah, we'll chuck that up onto the rocks. And hopefully it won't get caught. Except but in a fish's mouth. And also with these, it gets a little hard to put these in your fly box. You know what I mean? So That was a one, two, three, four. No two were the same tonight. And we started, which is the plane. And then we evolved. And we added a little green eye and some big ears. Then we got a little rowdy and added some legs. Legs with red eyes. And then finally on our last piece of our puzzle here, we did uh, put that little guard on there. What do you think? Questions, comments, com concerns? Smash that like button. And if you like these videos, share them with somebody. That's, that's, that's honestly, that's one of the biggest compliment you can give me. Uh, and we got to hang out with uh, our good friend. I don't know. I don't want to call him George. That would be too obvious. This guy would be too obvious. Maybe we'll put him on the, he's a secret. Maybe we'll keep him with the secret sauce. Solar res cap. I don't know. We'll think of a spot for him. Hang out with the hackle bell. Yeah, I guess it could be like a flat Stanley. <laughs> oh no, Mr. Bill. I don't know. It's a cool little thing. A little finger puppet. Anchor here. There we go. All right. See, so yeah, I could be a ventriloquist, and then you could say, "Hey, oh, Sally the monkey. Hey, what's up, Sally? Ah, Sally the monkey. How to take pictures of him at fishing spots? My brother uh, does that. He's got a Lego dude. Takes him everywhere." That guy does everything. Actually, I think he's... 
I don't know if I have a picture of them anywhere. But no, I some at some at one point, uh, my brother had these Lego dudes, uh, and what we did is he had fishing rods for them. And what's cool is you could drop them so they look like uh, fly rods. And what I did is I took some uh, yellow thread. And then I went from the yellow thread, which was the fly line, and I ran that through. And I actually was able to tie a, I don't think I had like 7X or some, some ridiculously fine uh tip it and i did a uh i don't remember what fly i did but it was a size 22 i believe 22 24 26 i'm not sure what my smallest hook was at the time but i tied some tiny flies for him and i made a little fly line and i uh, got it all hooked up so Sally the Bench Monkey. Kind of like the Trunk Monkey, I guess. <laughs> but, I don't know. Well, I think we're uh, just getting to that jibber-jabber stage of things. So, we're going to wrap things up. We'll switch our camera over to this. And get the outro music going. we got our mouse in the house. Or at least a version of a mouse. Next week, we'll do another mouse. And that mouse will be a deer hair mouse. Here's one that I did not tie. But we'll do our own thing. Trying to see if I do have any mice that I've spun around here. I don't see anything immediately. They might be in their boxes. Or we might do something completely different, but let's plan on let's doing some spun out deer hair or spun deer hair. Questions, comments, concerns? Leave them below in the comments. Until next time, I want to thank you all for watching. Stay healthy and safe, everybody. Happy tying. Tight lines. Peace.